Well, welcome back to the fourth day of live and interactive here from Hanover from the Industrial Trade Show 2022. And somehow, Felix, it's like end of December, it's the 24th and boom, Christmas Day is here. And that's how fast the week moved over until the fourth day. So last chance for those of you who are listening in the near neighborhood to come to Hanover. But for everybody else, also the last chance to listen to live and interactive here from Hanover. So what is the technology tips? So what do we need to do to stay in touch? You can write into the chat. You can tell us from where you are tuning in. You can tell us if you have any questions about any of the things which we present today. You can also ask us for wishes, products which you like to see okay. from back off. Or you can write an email to meet at backoff.com and then you can get in contact with all of the people you see in the video today. And um, yeah, everybody else inside Backoff, I guess, right? Yeah, that's true. And actually, we have a chat team behind us who's supporting us. And if you like, you just write maybe this time a lot of questions into the chat. And we can see if the chat team will answer this quickly enough. So maybe that's the challenge of the day. Just shoot questions and questions and questions and see if you can just overwhelm our chat team. I would send you into our highlight forum because you have the next session. And I'd just like to add a, yeah, a big thank you that you stay tuned the entire week. It is a pleasure for us to be here, but it's also exciting and we really appreciate your support and your listening. Let's move over to Felix and start with our technology trip on day number four. I'm with Daniel in the MX Forum once again, and this has been a spot of frequent attention this week. So we have sent, I think, three videos from the MX Forum, and I think most of our customers who visited us here in Hannover, they went through this area, and you explained them the technology. What kind of discussions did you have over the course of this week, Daniel? Yeah, we have very good conversations with the customers this week. So it was very good. They, they like the idea of the MX system. Some of them, they have nice known it, so they come directly to this and want to look at, have a look at it. Some, they really discover it here. They see it and say, wow, that's a good, great idea. What have you done? And that solves many, many, many problems. So if you address and tell them the story about the cabinet, they say, okay, that's, you, uh, you have found my problems and you have solved, uh, solved my problems with the solution of the MX system. So everybody is happy that we are basically taking care of transferring all automotion components in a unique form factor with standardized yeah. interfaces where we take care of protection class, of EMC and of everything. Yes, that we take care of. And they only have to look for actors and sensors for their field area, but they don't have to take care of the cabinet and don't have to think about the construction and all these things. I think that's a very nice start for yeah, trying to push forward the trend of the cabinetless machine. Yes, that's so a nice I think you're start. happy? I'm very happy this week, Perfect. it was fine. That's very, very good. Now you can have a Coca-Cola, but I have a question for you in a couple of seconds okay. once again. <laughs> <laughs> um, here I'm with Paula, and we talked a bit this week about what is about the MX system, how it is working, how the mechanical components are, what is inside, mm -hmm. but we have not really tried to sell it, right? So if we look at the control cabinet, it needs to be constructed, you need to think how you want to design it, you need to plan it, and you, and you finally need to install it. Can you maybe walk us a little bit through these steps and tell us yes. where the specific advantages of the MX system are? Yes, of course. Let's start with the engineering. If you um, would like to design and plan a control cabinet, it takes quite some time and uh, the mix system is much easier to design and to plan which is which can be shown in our circuit diagrams yeah. this is the circuit diagram i think we showed it yesterday already this is the circuit diagram for the control cabinet it's about 100 pages and this is the circuit diagram for the mix system and it's only 25 pages this means the engineers can be way more efficient planning an MX system than a classical control cabinet. Also very good from the ecological point of view. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if, you, if you can reduce, like you can hand it to me, yeah. then you have your hands free for gestures. Um, if you can reduce the paperwork by that amount, I also guess that planning is faster, right? Yes, exactly. A lot faster. So the same time it takes to design a control cabinet, you can design four MX systems. Okay. That's very, very special because I think what we are discussing here on the fair a lot is actually that many companies tell us, hey, we have so few people to do all the things which we want to do. So skilled people are really, yes. really scarce. So the MX system is also a way to, you, to, to make sure that these people are as efficient as possible, right? Yeah. This brings me to the next point, to the setup of the MX yeah. system. Because usually you need electricians for the 
all the internal wiring for, of the components in the control cabinet. The mix system is based on the plug and play principle, as you know, yeah. and this means there are no electricians needed to set it up. I think this is something which we proved really nicely on Monday where yes. our Chancellor came around. And our, our Chancellor Olaf Scholz, he, is, um, he studied law, so he has no education as a, co as a contra uh, control cabinet builder, yes. and he managed to assemble a system. So it's I think very that's easy. Chancellor yeah. proof now. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's very, very interesting, Paula. I would say so the, um, the setup is faster, the installation is faster and much easier. You do not need anybody's yes. skills. But, and how about the installation in the final machine? So the MX system is a lot more compact than a classical control cabinet. This means you don't have that much machine footprint needed to set it up somewhere to install it. Yeah. You can just take the MX system and screw it somewhere on your machine, wherever you have a little bit of free space. Okay, space saved as well. Thank you very yes. much, Paula. Have a Welcome. nice rest of the day. I will hand you the yes. plans back, so you? you need to show this to customers. I will. And then I just discovered something which I would like to discuss with Daniel. So it was me again. I'm seeing <coughs> these small squares here. I think that's a data matrix code. That's What's behind that? That is a direct link to, uh, to the homepage, uh, danielsingmeng.com. Ah, okay. It's, uh, it's easy. Very successful. Yeah, yes, very successful. <laughs> <laughs> it was easy for me to <laughs> make promotion for my own homepage. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the true story. The story behind it is that we have here a unique part number that is uh, inside the barcode. It's also printed inside the electronics. And so it's for diagnostics. The diagnostic thing is that, and that will be shown on next fair, that you can scan the barcode and then you have an app and can see the full diagnostic of the module and the system. So it's really for diagnostics. That's something you need for, uh, for maintenance. So no multimeter required no anymore and go from wire no to wire, measure no voltage? No measuring with multimeter, measuring with smartphone. That's the, uh, that's the idea. And we will show this next time, when we see us next time. OK, I hope you will yes, see us. Yes, I promise you. I will be around, <laughs> okay, will be around as well. That's my promise now. <laughs> um, and I think that's very exciting. So also digitalization of mm. these jobs where you check, for example, if lines are OK. Very exciting what we have to offer on the yeah, foreseeable future in the MX system. Future. Thank yeah. you, Daniel. Have okay. a nice day. Have a nice day. Um, the MX system is for sure groundbreaking and completely new. Another thing which has been always around in machine building is yeah, also sometimes inside the control cabinet, but mostly as actuators directly at the machine are pneumatics. And Sven Arne, you are our experts for our electrical cylinders, and I think we are trying to change the status quo of how linear motions are executed inside a machine, right? Yeah, we are basically trying to substitute pneumatics with our intelligent servo drives yeah. in form of our electric cylinders. Okay, and where do you see the specific advantages over pneumatic or, 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 or over classical pneumatics? Um, for one, you get full process control. Yeah. So together with TwinCAT or X drives, uh, there's basically no need to to fiddle around with end switches or uh, try to, to figure out position because it's a multi-turn encoder. You got the position from plugging it in, just use a drive manager, click start, and you're good to go. Okay, so you replace the, ho the hose so the, or the, the pipe, you replace the pipe by a cable. Yeah, then just you one. Just one cable, yeah, that's also very important. Um, and then you get all the information of the uh, exact position of the electrical cylinder. You get, you know, the forces and everything is available in TwinCAD and you can actually do something. So it's just uh, not just one zero, so it's actually a very controlled motion as well, right? Yeah, for sure. You can, as, as you might know from TwinCAD, you can program anything. So um, if you have a special curve um, or a special force, uh, stroke curve that you want to uh, drive with your system, let's say for, uh, for a pressing or joining operation, you now got the full process control and you can optimize your process just via a click on, on TwinCAD and directly see it. And also, in terms of traceability, um, you get the, all the feedback. So if you have some issues in your process or maybe some, some problems with mechanical linkages, the electric cylinder will tell you. A pneumatic cylinder does not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, last but not least, um, if you carry out these linear motions with these kind of big linear actuators, um, I guess there is a lot of force involved. How, how do we make sure that nobody is getting hurt? Yeah, we are uh, 
we used all the technology that we also used in our AM8000 motors. So we got the multi-turn ZL2 safety encoder together with our safety or twin safe modules. We are perfectly safe. Kay. So every twin safe functionality is available directly from start. Also, just plug it in and you're good to go. Kay. It's that easy. So safety is also integrated and this is now I would say classical machine automation what we target here, but there are other things which you can actually do with automation technology which go more into the area of living and uh, having a nice time. And this is a topic Roland is covering now with Frank Ruhmann, oh no, with Aki Kajalainen from back of uh, Finland. One, I mean, it's obvious on the industrial trade show that you have industrial application, but like Felix said, Vekov is also active in many other kind of applications. And one is what we actually normally desire and call building automation. And building automation is normally considered to be a factory hall, a, an apartment, a university, a theater. But sometimes we have, um, let's say, really fancy and amazing building automation applications. And to support our building automation applications, we have a global team of experts. And one of the experts is my dear colleague Aki from Finland. Uh, in Finland, we are about 20 years already in the market, normally in Hyvenka, which is in the north of, uh, south, south of Finland, but there's a second office in Tampere, and I think that's where you are, Aki. And Aki is a part of the team of global experts to support global, let's say, building automation projects. But today, you have a very specific project. So what is this all about, Aki? Yeah, exactly. So, first of all, greetings from Tampere, Finland, to you, Roman. And I have programmed this so many times, but now I can really say it out loud. Hello, world. <laughs> so, like Roman said, there are nice applications for our customers are doing in terms of building automation infrastructure. But every now and then we end up into really specific and precious projects. And in this case, I'm talking about Baltic Yachts, which is an advanced composite um, yacht builder. So they so are yacht, using our you mean products. a boat, mm. right? A sailboat. A boat, a sailing boat, a yacht, yeah, exactly. So okay. this mega yacht, as we would like to put it in, a, in a nice words. And, and indeed, we started with the kind of classical building automation functionalities here. So Baltic Yachts was using our control system for controlling the HVAC. In this scale of a product, product or solution, it's typically controlling the fan calls for air temperature, for air humidity. Uh, but also they added our DALI terminals, one of the most robust terminals that we have, mm -hmm. uh, to create different kind of scenes and moods and coloring for the exterior lighting and for the interior lighting. And also in some cases, it's also good to be seen. So the same light <laughs> can be used also for work like that. Yeah, what you told not me to that this... Sorry. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. What should we not forget? The AV integration. So that was also one of the key features there. So combining the audio video devices to be able to combine with the lighting controls and the nice climatic atmosphere. So that's really okay. key points in this kind of yachts as well. But this is a kind of, let's, don't get me wrong, it's like of an entertainment automation setup. But I noticed that in the next step, you were also able to get, let's say, real sailboat functions like pumps and winches integrated, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So like you know, Roland, with our customers, you get them, give them a little finger, they bite the whole hand. <laughs> so this is what happened as well with, with Baltic Yacht. So basically, um, they integrated by adding in additional terminals. They were able to control the different motors and winches and pumps and valves. And by the way, these are typically hydraulic devices. So our pulse width modulation terminal is really suitable for precise control in these kind of um, um, end devices or actuators. Another nice thing, combining our industrial products in this solution is the keel control. So the big thing under the yacht in the water, mm -hmm. which is stabilizing the yacht, is actually the height and the position of the keel is being controlled with our AX5000 server drive connected to an AM8000 server motor. Um, that's one nice feature. And on the other hand, in these yachts, you have different type of engines and generators. So Using our Ethercat uh, can open master terminal, we can communicate with the main engine for fetching uh, RPMs or load values or temperature or alarms and events to be visualized and stored in the database by so And as you can see on the right hand side picture, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, it's a typical automation project now, right? It could have been a machine, now it's a sailboat, and that's it. Exactly, exactly. That's the case. So combining building automation with machinery side, so it's really a uh, 
big, massive automation platform that we have okay. here. Now this is a sailboat, so energy is limited. So what do you do to make sure that everything is operating all the time? Yeah, exactly. So this is also a crucial point. So basically, as you know, these kind of yachts are using solar energy when moving. So solar energy in form of wind. On the other hand, you can see in the picture as well that there is the solar panels. So they are fetching or harnessing the solar energy also to produce energy and storing it with the, within the batteries. So we have integrated the communication over field bus with the solar panels as well. So we are seeing the battery status, we are seeing the production status of the photovoltaics and the solar panels, and also visualizing uh, this data and storing the data within the databases. On the other hand, the electrical motors are becoming more and more common in the yacht industry as well. So the electrical motor can actually be used as a generator. So this also reduces the, the consumption of, of the main engine and the fossil fuels in that sense. Well, excellent um, done. Now, the thing is that this is all hardware related now, but you were also able to support uh, Baltic Yachts in terms of software. So what has been done and used on the Trinket side? Yeah, exactly. So then just to put it in a nutshell, so this is a simplified layout, uh, but to put it in the real life numbers of the latest project that Baltic Yacht has done, they are having 11 of EK uh, Ethercat couplers in the yacht. They are occupying 350 Ethercat IO terminals connected over redundant ring into a PLC controller. And with the PLC controller, they are doing pretty much everything related to the HVAC, lighting, uh, winches, hoists, and they are also utilizing a nice number of our different functions like REST API for writing the database, the Kestron interface, the Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP as well. And on the other hand, there is a third controller or a second controller, sorry, which yeah. is dedicated for the HMI. Now, HMI is a good topic. You also programmed the Trinket HMI for them, correct? No, we didn't program it. We trained and we support the colleagues from Baltic Yachts and they are really clever, good guys in engineering. And if you take okay. a look on the next slide, where is the Twinket HMI uh, screenshot, you can really see that everything is nicely, first of all, colored, so you have a good visibility. And on the other hand, it doesn't matter where the information and data is coming from, if it's engine, if it's lights, if it's a solar panel, uh, if it's the azimuth control, everything is, is being visualized, shown, and data lock also in the databases. And now, last but not least, if engineers meet, there's always a special highlight or a little gift in the box. So what is now the final step you're looking forward? So what they integrated in, the, in this latest project from them was the Twinket Speeds, really a cherry on top of the cake. So there are uh, multiple microphones connected around the yacht. So pretty much anywhere you are located on the yacht, you can kindly ask Twinket Speeds, turn off the light, Set the lights to a lounge mood, play me some music. Aki, this is an amazing application. So thank you very much to Finland, to you and your team, and of course to Baltic Yachts, and also to show that automation technology made by Beckhoff can be used in all kinds of applications. Thank you. Uh, you say Hölleken Gölleken with the cheers on Finnish. So thank you, Aki. Hölleken Gölleken. Yes. Thank and you, Roman. And we Roland. move on now with hardware. When we talk about hardware, it's normally my business, and my idea was to take the C7015, the new fanless IPC, and promote this, but I'm not allowed to do this, because we need to talk about scalability and about our portfolio, and Felix is here to talk about that. Now, we've seen the Baltic Yacht, they use all the terminals, that's scalability, so how is our PC hardware scaled? Uh, yeah, actually, we define our IPC product portfolio by scalability in terms of product types, but also in terms of performance classes. Mm -hmm. So, in detail, we start with a very small controller with a single-core ARM processor up to the dual-processor Xeon-based industrial server with 40 CPU cores. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, and right in between, you will find hundreds of different PC types in different performance classes so that we can say, hey, with Beckhoff, you can get for almost all kinds of branches, all kinds of applications, customers, the p perfect fitting IPC system. Now in preparation for this week, uh, we went through all the technical documentations and news and so on, and we all noticed, and probably the customers as well, that within the MX system, yeah. we have the same scalability, yeah. but somehow different CPU names. Yeah. So what is going on in the MX system? Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, you will find the same scalability also within the MX system. So in the first step, we already introduced three different performance classes from ARM to Atom to the Core I-based MX system IPC. Uh, and if you have a deep look to the, uh, to the um, specifications, you will see, hey, that's 
CPU types that we do not present now on this trade show within our classical IP20 um, based devices. Yeah. So you can expect that of course also these new processor types with all these wonderful new features will also come into our scalable industrial PC portfolio. So basically we follow the, the rule that every one or other year new CPUs will be picked and integrated. Exactly. But that also means that the customers can expect maybe in a year from now that the performance classes of the MX system will also come over into the CX or the IPC system. Exactly. So a continuous development within all the performance classes, within all the PC types, so that customers can really rely on Backoff as a future partner in IPC business, but of course also related to all the other products that we have. So thank you. So it's about reliability and your expectation about scalability. Now, with this portfolio, we can automize a yacht, but we can also let the world fly. And I'm really happy that at the end of the day, we can take now a deep look into our explainer system, because this is magic automation technology. And I will hand over to Felix, and he will talk about explainer. Before we talk about Explainer, we want to show you something because this small Explainer system is controlled by our C6030 PC. So the PC Felix just showed in a real application, I mean, not a real, but a show application. Um, so we're actually using our own technology to make this happen. And I think that's also a pretty good topic to talk about, it, uh, to talk about a little because um, the system is how it is and we had the challenge to figure out which mover is which mover. Uh, and this is actually a bit difficult to see. They look very much the same. Um, how can we help our customers to figure out what is the name of a certain mover? As you may know, Felix, or you definitely know because you're the product manager for this product, um, we always had our mover detection. So when the system was starting up, we always knew, okay, a mover is there, another mover is there. And so we knew automatically the position of all movers. But we didn't know which mover was where. And this is, <laughs> this is critical if you turn down the machine, if you want to maintain it, and if you want to start it again. So then you want to know which mover is where. And we did that with a small accessory we applied to the Xplanar. So we did this with the mover identification bumper. Bumper means we took the frame, this black frame of the mover, and put some electronics in it. And those electronics uh, allow us to communicate with the mover. And we communicate with our stator tiles here, so we don't need any additional hardware on the tile side. We just need an additional bumper, which you can simply mount on the mover. Um, and also, of course, we have a little bit of memory in this PCB, uh, in this electronics. So there is the name of a mover stored. When you start up the machine, you can simply ask the mover, hey, what's your name? And the mover says, hey, my name is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Um, I think that's a very nice example for how we try to work. So we have a problem and we have our existing technology and then we try to figure out how we can actually bring these two things together in software. So figure out how we can manipulate our drive coils to do actual communication and this wireless without any additional hardware. Another topic, and I think this is even more fundamental than the mover identification, is our position feedback. So to make sure that the movers move, we need to know where they are. We just had a technical discussion about it where you gave me some impl implication on how it's really working deep down in the physics. Um, and maybe can you give us an idea how we actually use one of the biggest hype topics on this Hanover Fair to make this position feedback happen? Yeah, of course. And it's the same as you, as you said. So we try to use our existing technology. We try to use the technology we have in this whole back of uh, family. So our PCs and also our software um, implement it into the Xplaner and use it. Same for position feedback, because we do the position feedback with machine learning. Okay. Um, uh, because how do we want to measure the position of a mover? What we do is we measure the magnetic field with lots of sensors in our tiles. And then we have to calculate out of those sensor values the six-dimensional position of a mover. So X, Y, Z, and also the tilting, rolling, and rotation angles. And you can imagine, if you want to do this with a classical algorithm, it's complicated. It's really complicated. And also maybe not too accurate. So what we did is our machine learning department came to us, and we came a little bit to them, and they told us, hey, this is a nice machine learning problem. We can solve this with a neural network. And we did that. So what we are doing to calculate the position of a mover is we have a neural network. We put the sensor values in the neural network. And this calculates the position, 
the six-dimensional position really accurate, more accurate than any algorithm ever could out of the sensor data. And the good thing is, it's super efficient. So the calculating of the network just takes a couple of microseconds. And that's important for us because the control cycle of the explainer is also just in the microsecond region. So we are happy that the um, yeah, inference, as you call it, of a neural network takes like less than 10 microseconds, five, maybe two. I mean, and this has also like many practical advantages because um, if we would do it in a classical, or if we would try to do it in a more classical way, we would, for example, build in much more sensors. Sensors are semiconductor products, hard to get at the moment, always expensive. Sure. You have to have the infrastructure inside, you maybe need to have more logic. Yeah? So we actually are capable of making the tile as simple as possible and replace the missing hardware with this software piece, right? Yeah, definitely. That, that's what the machine learning is doing. And uh, furthermore, machine learning always sounds really complicated to the customer, but to be honest, we do it the exact same way that our customer would do it in the Explanar software. Yeah. So what we do is, we measure data at our facility. First thing you have to do when you want to train a neural network, get data. We do that by um, having a measuring machine at our production. You know this machine. Uh, you bought it. <laughs> Beautiful machines. We have three of it now. You yeah. should come and visit us for that. And uh, what we do is we take data which sound like you have the position of the mover through the machine and we measure with our sensors how are the sensor values that correspond to this, uh, to this mover position. And we take this data set, so mover positions in six degrees of freedom and sensor values, put that in the training process of a neural network. You can do this in the cloud, you can do this on your local server. We do it on our local server at our home. Um, and um, then we simply let it train. In this case it takes a day or two days, but it's totally offline, so it's not critical in the real time. Then we take the result as in the ONNX format, um, download it, integrate it into our, um, our Trinket software, into our Explainer driver software, and it's done. Yeah. And then you get a, the position of the mover in six dimensions every 250 microseconds in this PC. Yeah? Yeah. I think so that's pretty impressive and really shows the powerful combination of drive technology, machine learning, PC-based technology, and um, yeah, maybe also a bit of thinking and uh, sitting down and having fun <laughs> uh, talking about it. I think that's a really nice end for the week. Um, I'm a bit exhausted, four long days, and I will now get, get back to Roland. I will take you with me and then will we will <laughs> cover the end of the day. This is how fast four days have gone. Uh, we are extremely thankful that it was possible for us as a company, but also as a team, to present our technology again live in Hanover. Because we are so much in favor of getting in touch on an exchange with you. If you like to write down in your calendar already one other appointment, because from June 21st to the 24th, we are exhibiting in Munich at the Automatica trade show. And I can promise you a brand new technology highlight, a back of revolution on this Automatica, which we have not seen here. So it may be a good idea to travel to Munich or as an alternative, on Wednesday the 23rd, we have in the morning at 10 o'clock an interactive live stream like you see today. So one live stream on Wednesday or the trade show itself. There were some questions coming, correct? Right, I just wanted to tell you before we end this live stream, we have to answer a question. Because Daniel, you have been talking about the MX system for yes, the entire week and there's the actually system. a question about the planning. So do we have any software to, to design an MX system? Yes, we, we are e working on an MX uh, system designer, but you also can use ePlan. We also have, we used ePlan here and we have some ePlan macros uh, now ready that it can be used by the customer, but our own design tool will be also ready and that must be. Yeah, some more features, functionalities, but that's also something for the future. Ah, ah. get too boring for <laughs> you. Okay, that pretty much comprehends the day and ends the day. Yes. Do we have anything left to say, Roland? Well, I also appreciate that we have the global team. So make a use of our global team. If a question comes up tomorrow, next week, or in a year from now, back off is where you are, and we are more than happy to stay in touch. So for us, it's a big thank you to our people joining us, to everybody working with us, to the team supporting us backstage and in front of the stage. Stay healthy, stay in touch with Backoff, and yeah, come back when we are back. Thank you and take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Nach oben. Oh.